In the last video, we saw how to set up login agent, including the configuration of various security policies and tried running it to see how it automatically logs into the computer. Now let's see how to use login agent in conjunction with a real time process. Before that, let's explore the login agent object and see what's in there. If we open the login agent object, we see there are 10 actions in addition to the initialize and cleanup. So let's take a look at them one by one. First, we will see the is logged in action. As the name suggests, it will check if any user has logged into this computer and returns true or false, which will be stored in this data item, logged in, and it'll be passed as the output of this action. There is no input for this action though, because you are simply checking if any user has logged into this computer and not a particular user. Similarly, we have the action is logged. This will check if the computer is logged and updates the value of this locked data item with true or false. But before checking if the computer is locked, it'll first check if someone has logged into the computer. And if no one is logged in in the first place, then there is no point in checking if the computer is locked. So it'll simply end the action and send the default value of the locked data item, which is false. If someone has logged in, then it'll proceed to check if the computer is locked. This action also doesn't have any inputs. Next, we have the action authenticate to Windows. This action will take four inputs, username, password, local, and the domain. Username and password are basically the Windows username and password. Local is a flag data item, which is used to indicate if the username is a local account or a domain account. If it is a local account, the value should be set to true. And if it's a domain account, the value should be set to false. If the value is set to true, then it means a local account and you can leave the domain as blank. But if it is set to false, then you are indicating that it is a domain account. So you need to mention the domain name. All these four inputs will be taken by this authenticate code stage and it will either log into the computer if it is not logged in or it will unlock the computer if it is locked. Then we have the logged in users action, which will get the list of users logged in at the moment and updates this collection. The change password, as the name suggests, can be used to change the password of an account. You can provide the old password and the new password as the inputs, and it'll change the password. But this is hardly used in any company because most of the companies create the bot accounts like service accounts, and, the, and they are directly managed by the IT. Next, we have the action lock screen, which is used to lock the computer. First, it'll check if the computer is already locked. If yes, it'll simply end the action. But if it is not locked, it will proceed to lock the computer. Similarly, we have the unlock screen, which will first check if the computer is already locked. If not, it will end the action. And if yes, it will proceed to the code stage, which will get the username and domain name with which the computer is locked right now and passes it on to the unlock action as inputs. The unlock action is nothing but the authenticate to Windows action. The inputs for this stage are password and local, where local is a flag type which indicates if the logged in account is a local or domain account. Then we have the login action which will run uh, first the is logged in action to see if any user is already logged in. If yes, it will end the action. If no, it will proceed to run the authenticate to Windows action and logs into the computer. Next we have the log out action which will log the user out of the computer. Finally, we have the action get credential name. This action will simply find out what credential has to be used for this computer. So if you go to the credential manager, here I have a credential named Windows login colon Win7BP Prod2. Now I can create a credential for Win7BP Prod1 by clicking new, give the name as Windows login colon space Win7BP Prod1. Enter the username, then the password, set the access rights, and click OK. Now we have two credentials here, and how will BP know which credential to be used? That's exactly why we have this action get credential name which will pick up the right credential by looking at the computer name and that is exactly why it is important to give the credential uh, this name in this particular format all right so that being said let's see how to use this with an actual process 
I have already created a very simple process called run login agent and if we open that there are four actions I haven't done any exception handling here since it's just a demo process but you should add exception handling when you deploy it in real time so let's see what this process does first it will get the credential name and store it in this data item and then it will use that credential name to get the credentials from the credential manager and store the username and password in these two data items then it runs the login action followed by the unlock action and ends that's it when it actually runs the login action it will first check if the user is already logged in and only if it is not logged in it will proceed further to login similarly for unlock action it will first check if the computer is locked and only if it is locked it will proceed to unlock so this way once the process is run it ensures that the computer is logged in and it is not locked now all we need to do is run the login agent process before we run our actual process so let me go ahead and log off win7bp prod2 and if I go back to the control room drag and drop the run login agent process to win7bp prod2 and click start you can see that it is logging in once that is completed I will drag and drop the currency conversion process and click start that is it it will start running now you might be wondering why I'm not calling the run login agent process from the currency conversion process itself instead of running them separately well it doesn't work that way because if you remember in the last video I said the login agent has a separate runtime resource which runs before the user logs in now as soon as the machine logs in the blue prism runtime resource starts and the login agent runtime resource stops so if you call the login agent process within the currency conversion process the login process will be successful but then as soon as the login is completed it stops the login agent runtime resource and the process gets terminated because the runtime resource is stopped you can try that yourself and you will clearly understand it by looking at the logs so in real time you actually schedule them separately in minutes of difference so let's say you want to run the currency conversion process at 2 p.m. every day you will schedule the login agent to run at 1.55 p.m. and then the currency pr conversion process to run at 2 p.m. alright so I hope by now you have a very clear understanding of login agent thank you for watching and please do not forget to subscribe to my channel